So uh, after graduating from Vassar College, uh, I, uh, yep, that's right, um, I entered the uh, New York City Police Department. Um, and if you're thinking, what? Um, you're doing an excellent impersonation of my father in 1999. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a good question, right? I, uh, I didn't have any family on the job. I didn't have any friends who were cops. Uh, I grew up on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Uh, went to private school the whole way. Uh, this is not like a linear path. Um, uh, but I, you know, I'm a son of the city. I uh, love New York City. Like, thought being a cop would be really cool. Um, and so, you know, the idea of protecting people in New York City was something that was really appealing to me. So I did it. So I the academy, graduated about uh, seven months later in February of uh, 2000, um, and was assigned to the 28th precinct in uh, Harlem, which is the smallest precinct in the city. And after field training, I was assigned to my partner. Um, now, if you uh, watch television, like I, I do, uh, you would think that my partner was some sort of um, like Robert Duvall meets Lenny Briscoe kind of guy, right, who has like all this experience and he was going to really take me under his wing. Um, but my partner was actually a 23-year-old, uh, uh, like five foot two Dominican kid uh, from Williamsburg, Brooklyn named Will, uh, and we came out of the academy together, um, which is cool because we were really close and uh, we were great friends, um, but we had no idea what the fuck we were doing, like <laughs> at all, right? I mean... There was no background, there was no like, oh, well, I did this in this case. It was like each day, it was like just magic eight ball, like what the fuck is happening? Um, and, and there were also incidents that I didn't have any dealings with. Like we had a case where a woman pulled a hair extension out of another woman's head and uh, Will thought it was assault and I thought it was theft. And it was like, <laughs> it was like, like I, 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 I don't know. Um, and, um, and, you know, and there were officers who would uh, help us out, give us some, like, tips, right? So one of the officers, uh, Tony Boda, famously told me after a, a foot chase on 125th Street, <laughs> he's like, Campbell, listen, when you're calling for help on the radio, take the bitch out your voice, which was excellent advice. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> um, so, um, so we sort of, like, humped our way through this whole thing and tried to figure it out. And on top of the whole not knowing anything, um, I had the extra burden of sort of, uh, this wasn't my world, right? So I did, really was important to me that I came across not as playing cop or I was just having fun or trying this out or I was going to write a book. Um, it helped that, like, most people thought Vassar was a welding college, which I did not disavow them of that notion at all. Um, so that was good. And I was well-liked, I would say. Um, but I wasn't really tested, and that's really important in the department. You know, you just see how the guy stands up under pressure. Um, and that test came... Fortuitously, uh, in the winter of 2000, um, it was a really, really cold night. And we had a call for a guy acting irrationally uh, on 116th Street and Lenox Avenue. So super cold night. So we pull up in the car, and there's a guy. And when I say guy, that's the right. Uh, more ogre. Uh, he's, the, he's a big, big man. And he's standing, like, on the double line of 116th Street. There's, like, no one else around. Um, freezing cold. He's probably 6'7". Uh, 300 pounds, like all muscle, and he's wearing uh, shorts and sneakers, and that's it. Um, and he's sweating profusely. Um, and oh, and there were people in the street behind him that were like, "That's the guy." <laughs> like, gotcha. Appreciate you. Bet. So, um, so I thought maybe it was PCP. Um, we hadn't had a lot of PCP cases yet in our nascent career. Um, but we did have drug training for like an hour and a half on a Tuesday at the academy. <laughs> and the three things that the guy said, the narcotics detective was like, all right, here's the deal with PCP, all right? Uh, first thing you gotta know is you get really hot, you take all your clothes off. Check. <laughs> Second thing is you got like superhuman strength. Um, number three, you're impervious to pain. <laughs> all right, this is good. All right, great. That's good stuff. All right, so. Uh, so, and I should also say at this point now that Will and I had a really good working relationship in that um, I would talk our way out of like 85% of the stuff, right? That was like, we played our strengths, right? So I would just, I'm the talk, I was the good cop, like talking to people, right? And Will was like the very short, aggressive, like fighty cop. So when I couldn't talk us out of stuff, Will would like fight us out of stuff. Um, <laughs> because as I learned, as an instructor in the uh, academy said uh, when we were training, physical training, He's like, listen, if you got your ass kicked before you became a cop, you're going to get your ass kicked as a cop, which is, is true. Um, so, um, all right, so uh, I'm like, all right, sir, here's, here's, here's my deal, right? Here's my thing, right? So, <clears throat> right? 
Hey, good evening, sir. Officer Campbell, 28th Precinct. Uh, I think you did some PCP is what I think happened. So um, um, what we're going to do is ambulance is on its way. We're going to take you to the hospital. Nice, warm bed, the meals, pretty nurses. It's going to be a great time, right? Um, I just need you to put your hands behind your back, and we're going to handcuff you. You are not under arrest. I want to make that very clear. Um, but it's for, like, your safety and ours. It's just procedures we got to do, right? So how's, how's that going, right? And the guy was like, ha! <laughs> so like I, I look at Will and I'm like, uh, like uh, we call for help? Like, uh, no, we don't call for help. We don't call for help. No, it's okay, it's okay. We got this. All right. Um, and there was literally cartoon like steam coming out of his nose as he, like a bull. So I'm like, uh, all right, uh, what do we do? And then Will's like, hey, bro, because uh, it was just like that. It was like, uh, he's so short. Uh, he's like, hey, bro, um, uh, we have uh, pepper spray. And I'm like, that's right. We do have pepper spray. Now, I had never used pepper spray before, but in the academy, we watched a video. Um, <laughs> true. Uh, and uh, in the video, man, that shit works like a charm, right? You spray it, the guy's like screaming on the ground. No problem, right? So, whew, all right, so I take the pepper spray out. You got to shake it to activate, like, the pain crystals or something. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm like, sir, this is pepper spray. I don't want to have to use this. I really, like, really, really, really don't want to have to use this. Like, please, 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 please. Um, put your hands behind your back. I beg you, please, please, please. Right? And so at that point, he, <laughs> he, uh, he looks at me, and he's like, uh, I'm going to eat your babies. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, um, so then Will and I are like, what the fuck, I don't know what the fuck to do, what you, all right, so, so you call for help, no, don't call for help, we got this, we got this, we got this. don't call for help, though. So I spray the guy in a perfect, like the video would have been proud, so I spray the guy in a perfect pattern, it's like the money shot of pepper spray right here, like all over the face and the eyes and the nose, I mean, it's everywhere, right? And swear to fucking God, this guy does this, he's like, come get some motherfucker. So, um, so first I was like, first thought was like, that video is bullshit. That was the first video. S second thought, I'm like, uh, we, we should, we, should, we both at the same time were like, we, we, should, we should call for help. I think we should call for help. Call for help. Right, call, for help. Oh, call for help. All right, we should call for help. So, um, I'm like looking at him, I'm like, we're going to die. Uh, so I, I pull the radio out and I'm like, mm, like get all the, all the bitch out of it. I'm like, two way, Charlie. Listen, just gonna need a couple cars over here. No emergency, just to get a guy on PCP. If you could hurry up, that'd be cool. Right? And, uh, and so now, okay, so, you know, they're coming. It's a very small precinct. They're totally coming. But, like, I don't want to be standing there waiting for them. Like, that's kind of fucked up, right? Like, oh, thank God you guys are here. Now you can do something. So, that was where the I go high, you go low idea came in, playing to our physical strengths. So, um, so we jump them, right? Uh... And, uh, and so all of a sudden I realized that the trifecta of the narcotics detective was right, right? Because uh, he's uh, clearly impervious to uh, physical pain and he's super strong. I mean, this guy is very strong. Um, also, he's uh, incredibly sweaty, um, which means he's so slippery, right? So I can't, you can't put handcuffs on this guy, right? There's no way, right? So he's very big and um, he's biting my neck <laughs> like a lot, like really, really going to town um, on my neck. And so I'm just like holding on, right? And we're rolling around 116th Street and the crowd, which was so helpful pointing him out, was like, yeah, you got it red, give him the right, give him the left. And I'm like, yes, don't, don't worry, citizens. This is all is well, remain calm, you know? So, um, so sirens are coming and siren, I hear the beautiful sound of sirens, but sirens also is like, my jury and my salvation, right? It's like, oh God, I hope I didn't screw this up. So sirens and the guys all get there and they lift this giant dude off and they put him on the sidewalk and they're struggling with him and there's like six dudes like sitting on him, right? Like on the legs and the arms, like on the butt. And I'm sitting and I'm, I'm standing and I'm talking to the sergeant um, and a couple of things happen. First, Boda walks by and he's like, Campbell, good radio voice. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, that's right. And then uh, this other... Like, old head cop was like, man, that guy's huge. You should have called for help earlier. I'm like, oh, you think so, do you? <laughs> All right. um, and uh, Sergeant's like, Campbell, you want to go get taken care of right away? I'm like, no, no, I'll, I'll finish talking to you. Like, blood running down my neck. Cause... 
I'm kind of a badass right now. That's fine. So, um, so I'm going to, I go to St. Luke's Hospital to get my tetanus shot. And if you've never had a tetanus shot, it hurts worse than an ogre uh, chomping on your neck. <laughs> and I'm sitting on the bed, like with my uh, shirt all ripped and bloody, and thanking the inventor of the clip-on tie, by the way, um, and, uh, and holding like this compress to my neck, waiting, waiting for the bandages. And I'm thinking, all right, see? Now this is progress. Take care, guys. Everybody was kung fu fighting.